Missing Malaysian Flight 370 What actually happened to Malaysian Airlines Flight 370? Did it crash? Did it land in some remote part of the Indian Ocean? Did it crash land on a remote island in the Pacific? Did it hit another aircraft? Or did it land safely at an unknown destination, as suggested by many credible people? On March 8, 2014, Malaysia Airlines Flight 370, with 227 passengers and 12 crew members, vanished over the sea after taking off from Kuala Lumpur bound for Beijing. According to Najib Razak, the flight's final destination was somewhere in the Indian Ocean, but no additional details were provided. Many skeptics doubted the official explanations for the disappearance, despite the fact that searches turned up wreckage that was almost certainly from the crash. Conspiracy theories have been used to characterize some of these theories. Protesters from the families of those who died in the Flight 370 disaster mounted a demonstration outside the Malaysian Embassy in Beijing to demand that the Malaysian government provide any information concerning Flight 370's location that they believe is being concealed. According to the Goldsmiths University of London psychology professor Rob Brotherton, there is no definitive evidence as to why people believe in conspiracy theories after a disaster. According to Andrew Leonard, two weeks after the airplane vanished, fresh satellite data that had been kept secret by the government was revealed. The absence of a distress signal from the aircraft is also an issue. The Joint Agency Coordination Center said on May 29, 2014, that the jet was not in the search region officials had been scanning since April 2014, according to Barbara Demick of the Los Angeles Times. Debris from the crash was found with high confidence during the search. Objectivity and rebuttal. Blatant cover-up, according to conspiracy theorists, is the official account of the plane's crash in the Indian Ocean. They point out that a crash into the water in a Boeing 777 would be like striking a concrete wall at terminal velocity, since it lacks structural integrity. Some experts believe that in the event that Flight 370 collided with the ocean, the debris would have broken up into hundreds of pieces, many of which are buoyant and may be found by search teams washing up on nearby coasts. In the years after the plane's disappearance, many fragments of the aircraft were definitely identified. There is a strong interest in alternate hypotheses because of the Malaysian government's first dissemination of contradicting facts. An expert on the subject, Sunstein, said in an interview with the Wall Street Journal published on March 20, 2014, that those conspiracy theories are typically developed out of awful and tragic occurrences that drive people to become furious, afraid, and on the lookout for a target. According to David Sousey, a former FAA inspector, we need ideas and conceptions when we don't know what's going on so that we might think about other alternatives. On CNN, he said the following on March 26, 2014, it's essential to come up with hypotheses during an accident inquiry, even more so now that we have nothing to eat. It's not like we have any physical evidence. There is nothing we can tell since we don't know where the aircraft is and we need to find out why. The plane, if one explanation holds, would be the object of our attention at the moment. The aircraft might be someplace else if you adopt another possibility, such as malevolent intent in which they attempt to escape raiders. You must utilize these ideas and measure them against the facts to choose which one to follow. Deputy editor of Spiked Tim Black said, it's in this darkness, this near absence of knowledge about MH370, that speculation has flourished, and a Chicago Sun-Times editorial urged governments to search for the plane to debunk these theories and give victims families peace of mind. The commonly held belief that MH370 evaded detection by Indonesian radar, which has been mentioned many times, is based only on the claim that Indonesian authorities did not detect the jet. ABC News and the Los Angeles Times have raised the idea of a simple hijacking. Even though no organization has claimed credit, speculation has grown that masked gunmen hijacked and flew to a distant island. Unofficial researchers have found more than 600 potential landing sites for the airliner. Malaysian authorities have yet to confirm or deny the rumor. Several hijacking scenarios have lost credibility since the recovery of the first conclusive MH370 debris pieces in July of this year. Aviation experts Jean-Marc Girat and Jean-Luc Marchand presented their theory that the plane was hijacked, with a subsequent location of the plane estimated in the Indian Ocean near Christmas Island in the event of an emergency landing due to exhaustion. It was determined that controlled ditching was very implausible by the ATSP's final assessment, which was issued in 2017. 
there's not the only one that suggests a different location for the wreckage than the ones already investigated. The plane's disappearance sparked speculation that it was the work of terrorists, namely jihadists. Rupert Murdoch, the media tycoon, tweeted on March 9 to 14, 2014, that the loss of Flight 370 confirms Islamists turning to cause problems for China. A few days later, he said the plane might have been buried in the mountains of northern Pakistan, like Bin Laden. Shiv Malik of The Guardian described these claims as conspiracy theories since no one has been able to verify them. According to the Russian daily Moskovskij Komsomolets, a similar idea was approved the following month, saying that unknown terrorists had hijacked the jet, flown it to Afghanistan, and then kept the crew and passengers hostage. On Reddit, there was a rumor that MH370 had enough fuel to be diverted to North Korea, as had been the case with a Korean Airlines YS-11 hijacking in 1969. Employees of Freescale are being acquired. Patent number 8671381 was granted to Freescale Semiconductor and four workers, all of whom were aboard the MH370, within days of the jet's disappearance, according to a variety of social media postings and email chain letters. Each of the employees was a passenger on the plane. A semiconductor wafer is used to fabricate integrated circuits according to the terms of the patent. No proof exists that the four inventors on the patent application were on the airline passenger list nor that they were entitled to a 20% share of the patent, and it is implausible that Freescale's portion of the patent would return to them upon their death, as portrayed in the email. Some conspiracy theorists believe that MH370 was either kidnapped by the United States flown to the United States military facility on the atoll of Diego Garcia, or landed there immediately after being directed to do so. I'll throw that one out, said White House Press Secretary Jay Carney in response to a question on the latter idea at a daily briefing on March 18. The Comobile pilot's phone contact and the plane's westward shift, both of which were compatible with a flight route toward the island, were the foundations of the Diego Garcia scenario. However, according to a story in the Daily Mirror, the pilot used a computer flight simulator to practice landing on an Indian Ocean island with a short runway before the crash. Many news outlets stated that the pilot had practiced landing the plane at five airports in the Indian Ocean area, including Diego Garcia International Airport DGA, Mail International Airport MLE, and other airstrips in India and Sri Lanka via simulator. It was stated that the FBI had discovered nothing untoward whatsoever after examining the confiscated flight simulator, which it said was unsubstantiated and unsourced, in response to the Mirror's claims. Allegations that the U.S. military shot down Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 near their Diego Garcia facility have been made by a former French airline CEOs. Vera Ahmed and Ahmed Naidif of the Maldivian Daily Havira reported in an article published on March 18, 2014. A low-flying jumbo aircraft was seen by numerous Qutic Huvadu locals on March 8 about 6.15, according to Haviru. Apparently, it was a white plane with red stripes, in keeping with the usual livery of Malaysia Airlines flights. Several Qutic Huvadu residents reported seeing the plane flying north-southeast toward the southern edge of the Maldive, where it crashed. They were reportedly shocked by the flight's piercing boom as it sailed over the island. No other plane has flown that low over our island before, said one resident. However, I'm certain that this was not a seaplane. The plane's doors were plainly visible, according to one eyewitness. Many other people in the neighborhood have also reported witnessing the same thing. Some residents ventured outside to investigate the source of the deafening din. Cuda, Yuvadu's island councillor, Mohammed Sahim, said that islanders had discussed the occurrence. Debris found on Reunion Island in July 2015, suspected to be from the missing Malaysia Airlines Flight MH370, sparked renewed internet speculation that the plane had been shot down near Diego Garcia, which is 1,475 miles away from Reunion, out of fears of a terrorist attack. However, oceanographers such as Professor Trutha Pachirachi from the University of Western Australia said that the r sick was not a terrorist attack. Debris was soon discounted as phony by many, including those who thought the jet had safely landed on Diego Garcia or somewhere else. Theory of a Phantom Phone some of the most skeptical observers floated the phantom cell phone hypothesis, which holds that the passengers were still alive, but unable to answer their telephones. This was based on early claims that family members of Flight 370 passengers heard ringing, as opposed to a busy slash-off signal, 
when phoning the passenger's phones, but this was after the disappearance was reported. As a cellular expert noted to NBC News in an email exchange, the network may continue to create ringback as it tries to connect, even though the phone is no longer operational. Hijacking slash suicide by members of the crew Anti-hijackers strengthened cockpit doors and prevented crew and passengers from intervening with a suicide or hijacking attempt in the Southern Ocean, as required by the mandate. Similar incidents include the 1997 Silk Air Flight 185, the 1999 Egypt Air Flight 990, the 2013 LAM Mozambique Airlines Flight 470, and the later German Wings Flight 9525 2015. Ethiopian Airlines Flight 702 was hijacked on February 17, 2014, less than three weeks before Flight 370 went missing. The co-pilot locked the captain out of the cabin and diverted the plane to Switzerland to seek refuge. A friend of Captain Zahari, Ahmed Shah, stated that he had been meeting another lady the day before the disappearance and that his relationship with her was also in peril, according to media reports shortly after the disappearance of Flight 370. Shah's longtime friend and fellow pilot described Shah as terribly upset about the breakdown of his marriage. According to sources, an anonymous lady who used a phone number acquired under a bogus identity called Shah two minutes before the plane took off. To make matters worse for Anwar Ibrahim, who was sentenced to prison on March 7 after an earlier acquittal was overturned due to what many saw as political motives, Captain Shah also supported the Malaysian opposition figure. During the 170 interviews with Shah, investigators saw an odd pattern of conduct, namely that the captain had no social or business plans for the days following the 8 March disappearance of Flight 370. Florence Ticheni, who authored a book about the flight, claims Shah arranged an appointment with his dentist to retrieve the crown he had lost when the doctor called him a few days before 8 March. As needed, police investigation conclusions, given by select members of the investigation team but not publicly available, are cited in news stories concerning the captain's absence of social plans and flying simulator exercises. According to press sources from the 23rd of July 2014, authorities investigated the possibility of human influence on the jet and singled out the pilot as the primary suspect. The Federal Bureau of Investigation rebuilt the destroyed data from Captain Shaw's home flight simulator in the United States. A Malaysian government spokeswoman said that nothing untoward had been discovered on it. According to the Sunday Times, a simulated landing on an island with a tiny runway was identified among deleted flights completed on the flight simulator, which reported on the findings. In 2016, a leaked American document revealed that the FBI hard drive examination of the computer used for the flight simulator identified a path that nearly matched the predicted flight across the Indian Ocean. However, the ATSP cautioned that evidence did not show the pilot's involvement, and the Malaysian government acknowledged this. New Zealanders Jeff Taylor and Ewan Wilson released a book titled Goodnight Malaysian 370 in August 2014 that blamed the plane's disappearance on an intentional act by the captain, but confessed they couldn't offer any definitive evidence to back his thesis or identify a cause. Ewan Wilson has previously ruled out the possibility of a fire emergency. According to aviation expert Peter Clark from New Zealand, it would have taken immense expertise to seize control of the plane, and even the co-pilot would not have been able to stop the communications system and reprogram a seven-hour flight off course. But Clark agreed that it would be impossible to verify the idea even if data recorders were located because the voice recorders would likely have been deleted. Because if the pilot was in control of the aircraft, then instrument data would reflect no abnormalities. Shaw's family categorically rejected pilot suicide. Probably pretty precise flying, rather than simply a coincidence, said Simon Hardy, a former British Airways senior Boeing 777 pilot, to BBC News. Hardy also highlighted that the aircraft's swing toward the northwest across the Malacca Strait afforded a good view of the captain's home island of Penning. Penning was on the radar of someone. Someone was looking at Penning for a long time with an empathetic gaze. Penning, where the skipper hails, was the ship's birthplace. A peculiar hook forces you to turn to the left or right, come beside it, and then turn a long way around in order to have a good sight of Penning. Malaysian 370's output shows that there were really three turns rather than one. Penning has apparently caught the attention of someone. According to Simon Hardy, the pilot purposely flew the jet over his hometown of Penning before turning right and dumping the plane in the Indian Ocean. 
Reconstructing the captain's flight plan using military radar revealed these findings, according to the pilot, who evaded being detected by the military radar by flying along the Malaysian-Thai border, alternating between the country's airspaces. Fire The plane's disappearance has been linked to several ideas, including fires in the cockpit, cargo compartment, landing gear, or elsewhere on the aircraft. At the end of July 2011, Egypt Air Flight 667 had a strong oxygen-fed cockpit fire that damaged the controls, instruments, and a hole in its fuselage while it was still parked. The fire was extinguished in 90 minutes, even though firemen arrived within three minutes. According to FAA regulations, Malaysia Airlines must keep track of whether or not a remedy to the wiring near the oxygen hose was made and whether or not an oxygen hose with no metallic components was replaced. Perhaps the pilots turned around and tried to land at Penning International Airport, which have a 13,000 feet runway with an approach over the sea without obstructions. On July 11, 1991, a Douglas DC-8, Nigeria Airways Flight 2120, was destroyed when a tire caught fire on takeoff and spread throughout the aircraft, killing 261 people. It's possible that each similar event caused this latest tragedy. On September 2, 1998, a fire on a McDonnell Douglas MD-11 from New York to Geneva resulted in the loss of all flying instruments and control, resulting in the crash of Swisser Flight 111. There were 229 people killed when the plane went down in the Atlantic Ocean 8 kilometers 5 miles, from the coast southwest of Halifax International Airport in Nova Scotia, where it was making an emergency landing attempt. The avionics circuit breaker panel was damaged by fire and heat in the Swisser incident, rendering the transponders and communications equipment useless. Hypothesis of Failure According to CNN, political pundit Rush Limbaugh suggested that the plane was shot down. It has been argued that military forces have shot down civilian airplanes in the past, such as Iran Air Flight 655 in 1988 and KAL-007 in 1983. Reporter Scott Mayrovitz of Associated Press on March 19, 2014, classified accidental shootdown as one of seven leading credible ideas. However, he stated that there was no proof to support the theory that the military had brought the plane down. The downing of the plane by the Air Force of Malaysia is highly unlikely, according to Malaysian defense official Akbal bin Haji Abdul Samad. The Malaysian Air Force reportedly detected the plane on radar while it was in flight, but took no action because it was considered a friendly aircraft according to the Financial Express. The mystery was released in May 2014 by author Nigel Cawthorn. According to Cawthorn, a sophisticated cover-up was put into place after the jet was shot down during a joint us thai Joint Strike Fighter training exercise. Cawthorn undoes everyone's good work. It was deemed premature and inappropriate by relatives of victims on board Flight 370. Najib Razak, Malaysia's PM, said merely that the radar was a concern in an interview with CNN on April 24, 2014 this aircraft was detected, but they weren't sure if it was the missing Malaysia Airlines flight. The only certainty they had was that the aircraft was not hostile. Former CEO of Proteus Airlines Mark Dugain stated that U.S. military may have shot down the jet out of concern of a 9-11-like assault on their Diego Garcia Navy base. Cyber attack Sally Levisley, a former scientific advisor to the UK government, made several remarks that led some to believe that there was a cyber attack on Flight 370. Despite Boeing's denial, the question of whether current commercial aircraft security is enough to prevent such an assault remains open to discussion. Confident in the comprehensive security of all flight essential systems and the impossibility for a hacker to obtain access by either external or internal methods on the 777 and all Boeing aircraft said a company spokesperson, Gayla Keller. Supporters of this hypothesis point to an app developed by Hugo Tiso and presented at a conference in April 2013 that hacked into pilot training software. However, the Federal Aviation Administration and other key government agencies have discounted the app's relevance. A plane's operating system will likely differ from the one that Tiso used to test his program. An analysis by Texas A&M University math professor Goon Chen suggests that a horizontal or a vertical approach to the water would have resulted in the aircraft being broken into several pieces, which would have already been discovered. Connections between MH17 and QZ8501 MH17 was shot down over Ukraine on July 17, 2014. 
Some conspiracy theorists believe that the jet that crashed in Ukraine was Flight 370, since it was a Boeing 777, like the one that went down in the Indian Ocean. Conspiracy theorists use photos of the crash site as evidence that the Ukrainian crash site jet differed structurally from MH370. According to experts, there is no evidence that the two aircraft involved in this tragedy were owned by the same airline. Indonesia Air Asia Flight 8501, which went down on December 28, 2014, has some parallels to Malaysia carriers Flight MH370, including the fact that both airlines' aircraft lost touch with air traffic control. On the December 15, 2014, a conspiracy theory was posted on Chinese news sites regarding a supposed prediction. AirAsia will be targeted, as had MH370 and MH17, by a black hand or despicable international bully, seeking to hurt Malaysian-owned airlines, according to the user's post. He advised Chinese citizens to avoid flying with AirAsia for this reason. According to other internet commenters, a hacker or Chinese intelligence officer was the most likely candidate for the user's identity. Theories that defy the laws of physics Don Lemon's question on CNN about the preposterous hypothesis that a black hole swallowed MH370 generated a lot of publicity for the theory. When Mary Shivo appeared on CNN, she remarked, a little black hole would take in our whole universe, so we know it's not that. The Wire acquired comprehensive reasons from Columbia University astronomy professor David J. Helfand and Stanford University physics professor Peter Michelson why a black hole could not swallow an aircraft. Alternatively, Shavo may have been joking around and didn't intend for her words to be taken literally. The statistical probability of a meteor striking the plane is extremely low, so this is another possible explanation. Strange voicemails and texts were sent to an individual around the fourth anniversary of the disappearance of MH370 in Indonesia, which was located close to the area where the plane went missing. The Morse code in the voicemails hinted at an abduction by extraterrestrials. Although it wasn't confirmed, a guy who got the messages and voicemails claimed that someone had shown up and taken photos of his residence. However, this was never confirmed. Two hotels in Port Blair have been linked to void calls, but the caller's identity remains a mystery. According to the investigators, the calls were most likely a prank or hoax. There are accusations of guilt. In an open letter dated March 9, 2014, a mysterious organization known as the Chinese Martyrs Brigade claimed to be the head of the country's press media. The letter alleged that the disappearance of Flight 370 was revenge for China's reaction to the knife assaults at Kunming train station on March 1, 2014, and part of a bigger separatist campaign against Chinese rule of the Xinjiang region. An undisclosed list of complaints against the Malaysian government was also included in the letter. As a result of the letter's blatant inconsistency with Uyghur separatist parties, self-descriptions as East Turkestan and Islamic, as well as its lack of specifics about the whereabouts of Flight 370, the allegation was disregarded as bogus. The mere existence of unsolved mysteries is truly riveting, and there are countless tales of murderers, kidnappings, serial killers, and mysterious disappearances that have remained unresolved for decades. For some people, these stories are captivating, while others find them narratively boring. We all have our preferences on which mysteries we enjoy the most. However, each tale is captivating due to its mysterious nature, and we should be thankful for the stories that capture our attention. If you are also a big fan of the mystery genre, don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, Case Closed, to ensure you stay updated on some of the hottest mysteries. See you in the next video. Until then, we bid adieu.